Hi, I'm Jonathan Torrens, and tonight we're talking about high school. Hey, can you believe the outfit I wore to prom still fits? Huh? Looking good. The Winnipeg Comedy Festival starts right now. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival presents High School Confidential, starring Ron Jossel, Mark Forward, Dave Merhej, Pat Thornton, Kathleen McGee, Darcy Michael, and your host, Jonathan Torrens. And now, eyes forward and pencils down, here's Jonathan Torrens. Thank you so much. Good evening. Hi, Winnipeg friends. Welcome to the Winnipeg Comedy Festival High School Confidential Gala. I'm Jonathan, but why don't you just call me what other folks call me on the street here? Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> The beauty of working in Canadian show business is that I get recognized all the time as people I'm not. Matt Sundin, Ricky Schroeder, that guy from Saved by the Bell, your Uncle Kevin, pretty much any blonde person over the age of 20. But that's what keeps you humble. It's hard to get a swelled head when people are asking you, what's it like to be on Coronation Street? But I guess a few of you may actually recognize me from the shows I have done over the years. I played the challenging role of Jono on the CBC After School show, Jono Vision. Thank you. Then I played the racially misguided J-Rock on Trailer Park Boys, know what I'm saying? Era, era, era. And these days I play the vice principal on Mr. D, which totally legitimizes me as the host for tonight. As you know, we're here to celebrate high school, which I gather a couple of the comics on the bill even attended. It's impressive. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right off the bat. If high school was as good as it got for you, you're probably watching this from your prison cell or parents' basement. <laughs> Because let's be honest, the people who loved high school often describe it as the best nine years of my life. <laughs> but in fairness, my time in high school was a little different than most. I started on a show called Street Sense at 15. Oh, go on. I won't lie, that was tough. Have you ever tried to write an exam while answering a viewer letter? It's impossible. 13-year-old Brianna from The Paw writes in wanting to know why there's so much air in chip bags. What was I supposed to do, let her down? No. It's so they don't break, by the way. That's why there's so much air in chip bags. The grams are all there, go ahead, weigh them. I should know, I did that hard-hitting expose three times in the seven years I was on that show. <laughs> Do you know how embarrassing it is when the guidance counselor comes to you for career advice? <laughs> I'd sit him down and say, Dennis, you need to believe in yourself. Stop wearing sweater vests and aim higher. You're a guidance counselor, for God's sake. <laughs> My parents were kind enough to put me in French immersion, which was great, because it meant I could be bullied in both official languages. <laughs> Did you know the word for uh, wedgie in French is wedgie? <laughs> Did any of you guys go to your high school reunion? There you go. It was pretty easy to spot the girls who used to be hot at my reunion. They were the ones sitting with their now adult children. <laughs> Mom, can I bum you for another drink ticket? Okay, remember, I'm from the Maritimes. <laughs> We had parent-teacher classes. <laughs> my mother actually encouraged me to go to parent-teacher interviews myself. This is a true story. Her feeling was, anything they had to say to her, they might as well just say to me. Just cut out the middle, mom. <laughs> it's a good strategy, but it sure made for some uncomfortable moments. How am I doing in biology anyway, Earl? Let me guess, I'm a smart enough kid, but my disruptive behavior is ruining it for others? Figured. Just please, for the Lamb of God, don't send me to the guidance counselor. I don't have time to talk Dennis off the ledge again this week. <laughs> Please. All right, pupils, class is in. Are you ready, Winnipeg? We're gonna do this. Hey, remember all the cliques in high school? You had the jocks, the nerds, the geeks, the Filipino guy. Get ready to remember the 80s with Ron Jossel. Thank you. Uh, you know, I don't hate high school kids. You know, I hate saying hi to them, though, you know, because there's too many versions of handshakes. And you have to guess which one's coming. It's like rock, paper, scissors. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Sometimes you get a normal fist bump. Hey, what's up? Normal handshake. Hey, how you doing? Sometimes you don't know what's coming up, right? Then you end up doing this. You're like, what the hell? Why is your hand so soft? I'm still talking to my ex-girlfriend. Just to piss me off on her first date with this new guy, she brought him to one of my shows. Is that me? Can't do that. That's my job. I want to that to her. I want to go meet a girl and bring her nowhere and do nothing. <laughs> she was a high school girlfriend. She gave me an, an, uh, an iPod, which I lost. And uh, I'm not upset that it's lost. I'm just upset there's a guy out there that knows how much I like love songs. 
And with iPods as a counter, so many times I listen to each song. The guy's looking like 480 times Lionel Richie, hello. Oh my God, man, this little girl was upset. <laughs> Girls know what I'm talking about, because back in high school, back in the day, you had to listen to slow songs to ease the pain. Back when we had cassette tapes. Remember cassette tapes? If your CD skips today, you just have to burn a new one. Back in the day, when your tape skipped, you could hear it skip, like... Then you take it out and see it all unraveled. I was like, what the hell do we do? The one guy in the back of the car is like, don't worry, I've got a pencil. The high school kids don't get that joke. They're like, what the hell's a pencil? I was talking to this high school kid the other day. I swear to God, this is what he says. He's like, you know, back in the day. I'm like, what? You can't say back in the day if you're under the age of 30. You know why? Because you're still living in your damn day. He's like, back in the day, Facebook was so hard to use. Are you kidding me? Back in the day, I took a course in college called the internet which I failed. You know why? Because I forgot to bring my telephone cord to my exam. Remember that was on telephone cords? You on the computer, someone picks up the phone. Hang up the phone, John, download porn. It's gonna take me six hours. I can't wait till I'm horny. So I was talking to this idiot. He's on his cell phone, watching porno. And he's like, oh yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, easy, just download it. Wow, that's it? It's like back in high school, we had to go to the video store. In the back of the video store. Where the saloon doors were. We had to dress up as somebody else. Walk in, I see my dad, oh my God. <laughs> He's wearing my jacket, I'm wearing his. You know what's cool about this special? Uh, I'm Filipino and I'm on, gonna be on TV or the people are gonna watch are gonna see me on TV. Right? And when I was in high school, I never saw any Filipinos on TV whatsoever. But I thought I was Asian my whole life until when I was in high school, we had Multicultural Day, right? And they told me that I was not Asian and I was half Asian and half Spanish. See, when my parents came to the country, they had to fill out a form to decide what race they were. You had to fill out white, black, Latino, Asian, and Middle Eastern. They would check mark Asian and Latino, have two lines drawn together and write Filipino. Because that's what we are, we're half Asian and half Spanish. What happened was back in the day, Spain with the Philippines had sex with everybody and then left. He's like, where's your dad? On those boats. Where are they going? To the Caribbean. Why? To make Cubans. <laughs> you guys have been amazing. Thank you very much, everybody. Coming up, Mark Forward takes a look backward when the CDC Winnipeg Comedy Festival continues. Well, this next performer is going to talk about high school bullying. Aren't you panty waste? <laughs> After the show, he's so dead. Please welcome my buddy, Mark Forward. Um, there's a lot of bullying in school right now, right? Like, kids going up to other kids and going, you're a loser, right? And then they go up to them the next day and they're like, you're a loser. And then they go up to them the next day and they're like, you're a loser. And this, is, this has got to stop, right? Like, there's got to be a better way to just tell them once. <laughs> right? So he gets the point the first time. And I know it's hard because you're dealing with a loser. I remember all the other kids changing in the bathroom and uh, I would hide in the stall because I didn't want anybody to see my business. <laughs> I ran a small business in the stall. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, selling tiger blood. I was way ahead of my time. Um, some of you were upset right there, and you're like, hey, tigers are going extinct. I was like, well, they weren't then. <laughs> they were everywhere. There was a lot of tigers back then. They were, they were selling cereal and gasoline and... Yeah. I 
A lot of kids would put pictures on their lockers of pop stars and stuff, you know, like Sean Cassidy and like Burgess Meredith and stuff. And <laughs> like I was different, you know? Like I would put up a picture of Mother Teresa. That's who I was. Like some people put up pictures of people they admire, right? And some people put up pictures of people they want to have sex with. I admired her as well. <laughs> I wasn't very good with the ladies <laughs> when I was in high school. Um, I was your friend. I was, I was the one you'd call when the good looking guy broke up with you and you'd <clears throat> want advice from me, the guy that had never seen a vagina at that point in his life. I've seen one since. <laughs> yeah. And dear God, leave the lights off, right? But you'd call me crying because, oh my God, women can cry. Oh, wow. And you've all had a man tell you in your life that you look beautiful when you cry. You do not look beautiful. <laughs> When you cry, you look horrible. It's you at your worst. You're disgusting. Your face puffs up and stuff's coming out of everywhere. And the worst thing is we have to stand there and not laugh. And you cry so hard that you almost vomit. You know that cry? We've all stood there and watched it where you're like, You'd call me and you'd say, Daniel broke up with me and it's the worst feeling in the world. And I was such a nerd, I didn't know what to say. I'd be like, ah, come on. Worst feeling. You ever gone swimming wearing a sweater? You guys have been lovely. Thanks a lot, I'm Mark Forward. Well, back in high school, this guy was voted most likely to vote for himself if he wants to get a single vote. Why, it's Dave Merhage. Come on out, Dave. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, had, I had warts. <laughs> like on my eyelid. And then I was like, that's weird. And then I got another one. I was like, this is not cool at all. Because I don't even know anyone now that has warts on their eyes. And I don't even know if you know what that feeling is because it's just weird because your family doesn't know what it is. And they're just looking at you like a zombie because you're just creating this wart and your mom doesn't know. This is how bad the warts were. My mom got real. Do you understand that? She stepped out of Momville. Like she, you, know, you know how moms are like nice? And she just looked at me and she goes, we don't know who could help you. <laughs> like a wizard, we have no idea. You might have to go to a sorcerer. There's no way my father just looked like, I don't know, like I had sex with your mom and I didn't think this was gonna happen. I was like, how did that happen? I'm like, I don't know how it happened. I don't know, it just grew. I don't know who to go to. I can't be, you know how bad, like, cause when warts hit your, like when people make connection, like when they saw it, like in high school, like just no, it, look, it shuts down conversations. That's what it does. It's no way you can bounce back from war. Like you, like you step into a convo and then people are like, hey Dave, what's going on? Like people just leave. They're like, what am I gonna say to this guy? He's got warts on his eyes, there's nothing. I can't pick up chicks, just everything and my body shut down. My lips were like, now everybody just said screw off. My whole body with these warts and I went to a doctor and he panicked because he cut them off with scissors. Do you understand? Yeah. I was like, why did you do that? And he's like, I don't, I don't know, I have no. He's like, I've never seen that. He panicked. He's like, just, I literally walked in and he's like, I go, man, I got warts on my eyes. He goes, hold on. And he went into the bathroom and he goes, give me your head. I go, did you put me in a headlock? And he just cut him off and just stepped back. He's like, you're going to bleed a lot. I go, yeah, man, I'm going to bleed a lot. You got to help me, okay? I'm like in grade nine. I'm dying over here. I just hit puberty. I got glasses and I'm growing curly hair. And like, I look hideous. To the, and people, yeah, I look hideous and I'm comfortable with that. To look hideous. Not now. Now I'm, I'm all right. Like, you know. Like I'm six out of 10, I guess. Six out of 10, but that's not. <laughs> but that's not, that's not low self-esteem. You know, some people are like, hey man, you got low self-esteem. I'm like, no man, I'm just being realistic. 
six out of 10, and the other four to make me 10 is personality. That's how I look at it. Because there's no chick is gonna just have sex with me on the spot. You understand that? I don't have the looks for on the spot sex. I gotta sit there and talk forever. Do you understand that? I gotta find out your interests. Oh, so you go to school. Like, I don't care. I gotta do my research. I gotta dig deep in your soul to, to take you home. Like, I wouldn't carry you. That's weird. I don't, like, I have to sometimes. Just grab, I have to tackle you. Do you understand that? I, <laughs> and I had buck teeth, man. Yeah, that's horrible. You don't understand? Like, I had buck teeth and headgear. You know how creepy that is? So I had to, for exercise, I had to balance a pencil in my mouth to fix my overbite three times a day. I had to watch a clock 10 minutes on the TV. I just had to watch it. Just watch this thing. My dad, of course, is Middle Eastern. He has no, like he has a heart, but it's hidden. It's like a bunch of shawarmas and just underneath all that is his heart. And he's just grumpy. He had just, you know what, man? I, I respect him. He had sex with my mom and then he realized, man, I didn't plan for a kid and he's living. You know what I mean? He's dealing with it. He's trying to figure it out step by step. I'm pretty sure when I came out, he goes, ah, ah, like he was angry in another room. He's like, no, nah! like he just, I love him to death, but I had to balance his pencil in my mouth and he wouldn't tell company what I had. He would just let it linger in the air. He's a jerk. <laughs> he taught, because he was like, that's, I'm glad I had him in, like, not had him, but like in high school, like I'm glad he was there. Cause like he, did, he didn't like, you know, I wasn't a weak kid. He would just let me know. He didn't know how to deal with it. I was like, hey man, how do, I, this, the sex talk, he didn't care. He was just like, uh, go get the video game. Like he didn't care. I was like, what? He goes, go get the video game. I'm like, what about sex? I don't have sex with a girl. He goes, no man, headache, headache. What? He goes, headache, man. They do it. They ruin your life. Don't worry. And he would just show me a picture when he was young. He goes, see how happy? And then look right now. Oh. <laughs> but he was tough because I had a bully. I had a bully every day. I'd walk by the bully's house and he'd punch me in the face every day. I walk out, he just punched me in the face. Just to come up and just bam, just hit me and broke my heart. And I had to go home to talk to my mom. I was like, mom, she was just talking to the principal. I was like, okay, I can't. My dad pushed me in the bathroom. He goes, what is this guy? I go, I don't know. He goes, look, I hear it. You know, mom, the principal is weak. She's weak. Everyone's weak. <laughs> I'll show you. Let's go. I go, where? He goes, we're going to go get them. I was like, what? We're going to go get them. Eye on eye. Let's go. I go, what does that even mean, eye on eye? He goes, you don't listen. Maybe that's why he hit you every time. Listen, eye on eye. Eye my eye, your eye. Together, eye, we walk. Two feet high, man, go! I go, go where? He goes, go, focus, let's go. We get a block away, he goes, you wait here. He walks over, a bully comes out, I see them yelling at each other. My dad's hands goes in the air. I'm like, what is he doing, a dance? All of a sudden it comes down and he slaps this kid in the face. This kid did a cartwheel in the air, lands. My dad turns and goes, run! I go, holy shit, I can't move, I'm having an anxiety attack. He runs by, he goes, I'll see you at the house, bye! And I go, thank you very much, guys. Party animal Pat Thornton is up next when the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival returns. What a show we've got tonight. Pay close attention to this comic because this will count for 50% of your final grade. Here to school you in the art of comedy, it's Pat Thornton. Here's my impression of me trying to pick up a girl in high school. This is me trying to pick up a girl in high school. <clears throat> Read this when you get home. <laughs> yeah. A lot of teenagers keep journals or diaries. I know a lot of teenage girls do. Some teenage boys do too, it's fine. That's fine, I did. I recently uh, looked over my journal and I realized that it reads a little more like I was writing fan fiction about my own life. Because I think I may have been trying to make myself sound a little cooler than I was. But here, I'll just, uh, just read you a little bit here. Pat woke up before his alarm to a totally dry bed. He went downstairs where his parents were waiting with McDonald's breakfast. 
Right on, said Pat. No, you're right on, said his dad. And they high-fived and Pat got in his Jeep to go to school. But first he stopped to pick up his best friend, CP. And when that Jeep rolled into the high school parking lot, a girl yelled out, hey, is that a pig wearing sunglasses? And Pat said, what, you've never met my best friend, cool pig? Now let me just uh, step out of it for one second here and ask you guys this question. Is it as cool to pretend that you're best friends with a pig in sunglasses as I still think it is? Yes, yes. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna come clean with you guys. This is just a bit. It's not my real journal. High school was hard. Cause I knew it was important to be cool, but I just had no idea how to get there. The big song at the end of all the high school dances was Stairway to Heaven. That's when all the guys would ask all the girls to dance. Now, I couldn't do that. So to get around it, what I did was I would just stand right in the middle of the dance floor and air guitar the hell out of that song. <laughs> and I don't know what people thought when they saw me, but I guess I hoped that the couples as they danced past me were thinking, awesome. It's like he doesn't even need a girl. Got one more story, and in this one, I actually come off kind of awesome in this one. Because, because I went to two parties in one night, I got drunk at one party with some friends of mine, and then we were gonna go and meet some other friends at another party. And what we decided to do, because it's always a good idea, was take a shortcut through a construction site. <laughs> in that construction site, I picked up this stick. What I didn't know about this stick was that it was freshly spray painted and was covering my hand in red paint. And as I used it as a walking stick to get to this other party, I passed it back and forth between both hands a couple times, evenly distributing red paint all over my hands. <laughs> and then I got to this other party, and I'm hanging out, and I go inside, and I'm taking on my shoes, and I'm leaning on the wall, not realizing that I'm leaving red handprints on the wall, down the stairs, and just everywhere, right? I go down, and I'm cracking a beer and hanging out, and I have no idea that there's red paint all over my hands. And eventually, the mom of the party comes down and she's like, um, does somebody have red paint all over their hands? And everybody starts checking their hands, right? Nope, nope. And starts going around the room like the wave. Everybody's checking, no, nope. no. Nope. And it gets to me, and again, I don't think I have red paint on my hands, so I'm like, oh my God. And then I looked up at her and I was like, I guess you just caught me red-handed. And the universe just handed me that moment. Because I said that and then everybody laughed and then it was just okay. What? There was still red paint all over this lady's house. But I made the joke, I got the laugh and then no consequences for me. And that's the moment I decided to become a comedian. I'm Pat Thornton, have a great night. Well, this next performer went to Catholic school from Our Lady of Perpetual Hilarity, it's Kathleen McGee. Wow. <laughs> you know, the first uh, time I ever got drunk was in high school. Which, uh, which was really fun. I was scared to drink for the longest time because I thought that if you drank, you would immediately get sick. And my number one fear in life is vomiting, clearly. <laughs> I mean, I always wanted to be bulimic. I was just never brave enough. <laughs> so. But I got a fake ID when I turned 16 and uh, I went straight to the bar. And uh, my high school improv classes really helped out at the door when the bouncer looked at it. Really funny, I would just say, you're right, it is weird that my parents called me Mr. Takahishi. <laughs> they let me in, I walked up to the bar, and just so I looked like I was supposed to be there, I went up to the bar, and uh, the bartender asked me what I wanted, and I said, do you guys have vodka here? <laughs> they kicked me out. Uh, and uh, I mean, I've matured as a drinker, like I've gotten really good. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'll watch Intervention and think, that's not even drunk. <laughs> How 
How did you get a television special? No fair. Did you guys know they even had Intervention Canada? I didn't even realize it until halfway through I saw a woman doing coke with Canadian tire money. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Finally, I used for the five cent bill. <laughs> it's awesome. I was super overweight in high school, which is the worst time for a girl to be fat. Like, I wanted to lose weight because I wanted a boyfriend more than anything, right? Because beyond health, having a boyfriend was much more important. <laughs> So my friend gave me a tip. She said, go to the store and buy yourself a gold dress, an outfit in the size that you want to be, so it'll motivate you. So I went to the store, I bought a dress in size 10, hung it on my door, and was there every day, you know? And it was a good idea, and it would have worked, um, but it was covered in Big Mac sauce stains from all the burgers I would throw at it while I was crying in my bedroom alone at night. <laughs> Society's wrong! Real women have muffin tops, leave me alone! So I, I didn't get that boyfriend in high school, but I did have a high school sweetheart. Uh, it was the vibrator my girlfriends bought me on my 18th birthday. Right? You know, they all skip French class and pitch in a couple bucks and get you this cheap vibrator. They give it to you and you have to act all shy. You're like, oh my God, I'm never going to use that. I'll see you later. Um, right? Then I spent the next six months researching in my bedroom with this cheap vibrator that had the dial on the top, you know, with the arrow that looks like there's multiple speeds, but really it's just slow and teeth rattling fast, right? You had to put a toilet paper tube on the inside so it didn't go <laughs> My dad's knocking on my door. What are you doing in there? <laughs> I'm woodworking! <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, you never forget your first vibrator, right? Like, <laughs> you'd be having a great time. You'd be enjoying your night. You'd be like, Treating yourself like a lady. <laughs> You're beautiful, I love you so much. The boys at high school will see it soon. <laughs> you know, and you'd get there, and you'd get almost right to the top, and you'd get right there, and then all of a sudden it would just die, right? <laughs> Which sounds like a product flaw, uh, but to me, it just made it so much more realistic, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> he might as well just have rolled off of me, walked into the kitchen, made a sandwich, and yelled, you know what happens to a lot of electronics. Um, I was really bad at math and science, uh, so I got my dad to do all my science projects for me. I had to build a mousetrap car. It had to be powered by a mousetrap. So my dad made this amazing car, and then he said, we need something rubber on the wheels for traction. Yeah, he put condoms on the wheels. <laughs> to go to school with a car covered in condoms. It was mortifying, <laughs> but I won the safety award, so, you know. Thank you very much. I'm Kathleen McGee. Have a great night. Still to come, it's Jonathan Torrens, Unplugged, when the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival continues. I thought it might be fun to take some of the feelings I have around high school and express them in song. One of those feelings is friendship, which is why, much as I'd like to, I can't do the song alone. So please welcome back my colleague from the CBC show, Mr. D, why it's Mark Forward. Great set earlier, really. Thank right? you. Thank Mark you. Forward. Thank you. Hey, listen, Mark, thanks for helping me out with my song on such short notice. Hey, no problem. I'm excited. Well, we can certainly all relate to how good it feels to be included. So here we go. <clears throat> A two, three, four. High school was the time in life when we were all so close. We all remember what it was like to have our own talk shows. On a first name basis with teachers We could come and go as we'd please We cut class for the Geminis To collect all our trophies Cause we were on TV Looking back on that painful past We just wanted to fit in But the nice thing about high school is We all went through the same things
My school was a living hell that nearly broke my soul. Uh -huh. I cried myself to sleep at night, begged my mom don't make me go. Medical terms, acne, vulgaris, okay. but the girls just called me gross. Football team was kind enough to shove dog crap down my throat. Now that's just from a mastiff, might I know? Wow, it's a big dog. Looking back on that painful past, we just wanted to fit in. But the nice thing about high school is we all went through the same things. So almost the same. It's not. Mark, please don't be sad. We all had times of uncertainty. Okay. I was taxed at such a high rate. I couldn't always max my RSP. How is that? It's just that's stop it. What's stop it. Point? Yeah, okay. We all know you did a lot of work. Okay, but did you have any friends? No. Did you have any memories? Did you have any friends? No, not at all. Okay, but you said all that other... That's a... It's a funny song. <laughs> Glad I asked you to do this with me. There's one... There's one chorus left. Like, why don't we just do it as... as, uh, friends? And then go out after as friends no. and Looking yeah. back on that painful past We just wanted to fit in But the nice thing about high school is We all went through the same Things wipe things. Gotta watch for the cues, man Ladies and gentlemen Mark Forward, my friend. Not the toy. Coming up, Darcy Michael remembers the gay old times on the CBC Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Well, this comic came out in high school. Ah, oh, who are we kidding? He came out in preschool. Please welcome the only guy to ever refer to shop class as sexy. It's Darcy Michael. Oh, my God. School. I don't know. I don't know what all the big fuss is about, you guys. I spent high school fat, gay, and covered in acne, so obviously it was a breeze. Uh, <laughs> there were some benefits to being fat and gay in high school, though. You know, it wasn't all bad. Like, uh, one of the benefits, I was too big to fit in a locker, so that was a bonus. You know, wedgies were a bit of a turn on, so, you know, like, a little to the left. <laughs> I think the biggest benefit, I don't know, hey, gay kids watching at home, take advantage. I'm, your Aunt Darcy's giving you some advice right now, all right? Take gym class as much as you can. Every class starts and ends with five minutes of free porn in that locker room. Oh my God. Uh, I went to school pre-internet. Don't judge me, all right? Like, I had to manually upload my spank bank, okay? But like every now and then the gym teacher would surprise me and be like, sorry kids, today we're gonna have to learn to waltz. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna go get my dancing shoes out of my purse, you know? Like, and rugby? Oh my God, don't even get me started on that little orgy in the mud, right? <laughs> Can't I just be the ball? Um, there are like, you know, I had the regular fears of going through high school, like bullying or failing a test and stuff. But like, I think my biggest fear, and guys, back me up on this, okay? My biggest fear was the surprise boner. Do you remember that? You're sitting in math class, the teacher makes a joke, everybody laughs, I get a boner. What is going on? You know, and I'm not one of these guys that can just tuck it into the waistband and continue on with his day, you know? Like, I, like when I get a boner, it is there, right? Like, 
I have a little sensitive about the voter thing. Here's why, okay. This is the worst day that ever happened to me in high school, was in grade 10 in Mr. I Mr. Painter's English class. We had been given a homework assignment to write a poem about our first love. And sure enough, I'm sitting at my desk and Mr. Painter goes, Darcy, it's, it's your turn to stand up and read your poem. And a part of me was already standing up, okay? So I also had a speech impediment in high school. I couldn't say ours. That's actually why I go by Darcy Michael. My real name is Darcy Michael McCrory, but I couldn't say it. I was Darcy Michael McCrory. <laughs> so I had to stand there and read this poem. Okay, here's the thing. Here's, this is gonna be the most humbling moment of my life. Uh, my mom never throws anything away. So unfortunately for me, and lucky for you, I have my high school journal, and I'm gonna read the poem to you, and it's the most embarrassing moment of my life, okay? So bear with me, all right, Winnipeg? Are you with me? I'm opening up to you! I'm so, this is, I'm so nervous to read this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do it with my speech impediment. So, my first love poem, with a boner. If only I'd recorded every minute with you, maybe I wouldn't be so sad today. Together we went from sharing heartaches and heartbreaks to turning tears into laughter, never letting our smiles fade out of sight. Together we always put up the fight. You were my light, my sight, my jewel. You were the greatest basset hound in the world. With a boner! Huh? Yeah! Take that, Mr. Painter! <laughs> I think the biggest moment for me in high school was when I came out to my parents, you know, like, I came out 17 years ago, okay? It was a different time back then, like, Ellen hadn't even manned up at that point, okay? I was blazing my own trail. But here's the thing about my family, like, my dad was on the Toronto SWAT team for 20 years, all right? So he's like, alpha male. And my mom taught Sunday school her whole life, so she's like, yay, Jesus, you know? <laughs> And I came home one day and my parents just looked at me and they said, son, are you gay? And here's the thing. I'd just come home from a party where we had taken a boatload of mushrooms. <laughs> and now I'm in the living room with me, my mom, my dad, and a dragon. <laughs> I was terrified, you know, but I just looked at the three of them and I said, yes, I'm gay. And instantly my parents were like, you're our son. We love you, it doesn't matter. The dragon was a little more homophobic. <laughs> He had some issues, yeah, he brought up some valid points, but, you know, we talked through it, we talked through it. But, like, my parents, like, they didn't, they, that was unconditional love, you know? Like, they just said, they, you're our son, we love you, you know? And because of them, I not only survived high school, I thrived, you know, and I love them for it. And because of that, for the last 17 years, I have made a conscious effort not to eat a banana in front of my mother. <laughs> That's my gift to her. <laughs> But it's true, you know, like, parents, love your kids unconditionally, gay, straight, whatever, even the ugly ones, love them, all right? <laughs> but, like, the kids watching at home, like, one final passing note, I just honestly, you know, like, I live a great life, I get to tour the world talking about my feelings, and it sucked for me in high school, so just understand that it gets better, all right? Like, life, love, sex, drugs, oh my god, it all gets so much better. Thank you very much, Winnipeg, have a great night. That's it for our High School Confidential Show. For those of you who didn't take it as seriously as you should have, I will see you tomorrow morning bright and early in our Summer School Confidential Show. Thanks for watching. Good night. Canada competes at the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games. Follow the triumphs and tears on the road to Rio 2016 with full coverage online and television. The Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games continue on CBC.